I, I want to show you something from uh, Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski when she was being followed by reporters getting to her car. We got the uh, audio and video of that prior to the tour closing. Take a look. This is her car, everybody. Guys, give her room. It's her car. It's her car. This is her car. Out the way. Senator Murkowski, how do you feel about what has been agreed to? I think it was a good step today. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. <laughs> Safe travels. Thank you. All right, I think it was a good step today. Lisa Murkowski adding her voice to this extension, uh, granted for an FBI investigation of the charges of Christine Ford, along with the likes of Joe Manchin uh, and Susan Collins. Obviously, this all started with Jeff Flake, Heidi Heitkamp, the Democrat of North Dakota. All of them seem to be on board with this delay, as long as it's limited to a week. Next Friday, we will know. Uh, but what if this drags on and on? And what if what seemed like a given nomination uh, that would uh, have uh, Brett Kavanaugh sitting on uh, the U.S. Supreme Court gets delayed or even denied, then what would the market impact be? Because the markets have a funny way of showing concern for this. We ended a quarter that was a baffle performance and one of the best quarterly performance, for example, in the uh, S&P 500 we've seen in years. Uh, all the major market averages up appreciably, including the Dow up better than 8.8 percent, the S&P 500 up better than 7 percent, the Nasdaq 6 point, almost 7.1 percent, I should say. Bottom line, all the market averages just humming along despite the fears of this and on trade and then Canada part of NAFTA, not part of NAFTA, things falling apart there, things falling apart with China, all this stuff that was going to royal trade. Is, well, they have a funny way of showing it. Why is that? Let's go to Gary Kalfan, to Melissa Armo and uh, our own Susan Lee. Uh, Susan, what's going on here? It seems a disconnect or maybe it's perfectly natural. I think it's perfectly natural. I mean, look at the background that we're trading off of. Look at the corporate earnings, and you have to thank the corporate tax cut for a lot of this, for the fundamentals, as we call it, in the markets. Best quarter for the S&P since the fourth quarter of 2013. That's almost five years. Nine consecutive quarters of growth for the tech-heavy Nasdaq, and that just shows you trade deals or no trade deals, Mueller probe or, you know, confirmation of uh, Supreme Court nominees. The market just wants to go up. You know, um, Gary, I always wonder uh, whether it assumes a lot, though, and if there's an unexpected development, let's say like a, a Kavanaugh nomination that goes kablooey, uh, still you know, hard to say, it's, it's early, uh, you know, a trade talks that, that seem to be producing down the road promising results, even though nothing has materialized yet. But you, you get my point that there, there are the expectations that things will work out. What if any one of those don't? Uh, I don't think Kavanaugh is a mover. And, Neil, we had sell in May and go away was supposed to be bad. September supposed to be a bad month. And we're already hearing about October crashes. For me, it's not the news. It's always how the market reacts to the news. And all I can tell you right now, in spite of the financials acting terribly, in spite of world markets not doing well, in spite of oil prices moving to multi-year highs, major ind indices are still hanging in there. By the way, in spite of the trade issue, too, and until until that dynamic changes, you have to be happy with what you're seeing. Now, at any point in time, markets can start reacting negatively to something that shows up, and maybe it is Kavanaugh, but as of this second, and we had a one heck of a week, the only thing we did saw was lighter volume as the markets right. basically stopped dead in its tracks uh, during all, uh, the event. You know, Melissa, what you've been saying throughout is that um, the wind at this market's back is the economy and better earnings and everything else. That's all they pay attention to. Do you, do you expect that will be the case? Yes, I definitely think the worst is over for the market in reference to tariffs. They've come, become used to Trump as the president and his tweeting. And as far as Washington politics, the market has taken it in stride. You can't forget the fact the Dow made a brand new all-time high just in the last two weeks. And I'm looking going into earnings season, which starts in the next two weeks, for a very positive quarter for the market. I believe that we close the end of the calendar year 2018 as strong and bullish like we started it. Even though we had that whole period where we were back and forth, I think we're through the worst of it now. I'm very bullish in the market, and I said that when I was here two weeks ago, and then you we made a brand it. new high. You did indeed. I want to thank you all. I'm very uh, sorry we truncated this with all the breaking news here. Uh, we are getting uh, word again from more Republican senators and Democrats who are on the fence that they welcome this delay here. Um, so we'll see what happens with them about uh, whether they stick to this one-week deadline. I'd be remiss, too, if I didn't mention a couple of other developments concerning what was happening with Tesla today and Elon Musk today. One of the world's richest men is under the gun. He lost a billion dollars in paper worth today. He, he has a couple of billion more, but I'll, I'll, I'll update you after this.